So, the other day my cat, that's chilling right next to me, told me about this UI library that had so many great backgrounds that you could use in your application. Scroll animations with no abstractions right out of the box for you to copy and paste. So, let's explore this library together in this video. Some components are incredible, some are not. We'll get there. It's built on top of Next, React, Tailwind, and Frame Motion. And the entire idea behind this is that you can copy paste trending components and use them in your websites without having to worry about styling and animations. This entire thing is powered by Frame Motion, which is a super capable React animation library. I've used it in a ton of side projects before, and it can handle some serious workloads with pretty good performance. Like this code preview right here, where the animations happen, this is also powered by Frame Motion. It's a super capable library so I'm happy they chose it as kind of the basis for this UI library and there's a lot of components that you can just grab and copy and paste from here we're gonna go through them and it lets you recreate effects of really popular websites that people like a lot like linear it's very heavily front-end based there's a lot of design decisions made here on the website the most popular arguably being this light right here as we scroll down you can see the light expanding and as we scroll up it goes back again this is one effect that people have tried to recreate for example on YouTube a lot and it turns out this UI library has a component just for that. But let's start from the beginning for example with the MacBook scroll effect. This is one of my favorites. As we scroll down we can see the image popping out of the MacBook and then appearing in big on the website. And there's really two ways to profit from this, right? First off, you could just copy paste this inside your app. The library gives you all the necessary dependencies right here. You can just install them. And as you'll notice, the library itself is not a dependency. Instead, all the code that you need to have these components in your own project is given to you with very little abstraction on top of it. So you can just grab this, copy and paste it into your own project, which is awesome. And then at the same time, you can also learn from the code how this is architected to build your own components in a very similar manner because I kind of looked through the code and it looks pretty clean to me. Because as you'll notice, copy and pasting for each of these components probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I don't see the only value of this library in copy pasting because yes, this effect is cool. For example, this is known from Google Gemini and they kind of rebuilt it. This is awesome, but chances are you're not gonna wanna have the exact same effect on your website. It would just kind of be a ripoff, right? So instead, what I propose you do is take a look at the code, how it's written, and figure out what you want on your website and implement it similarly. Because each component kind of shows a different animation style. For example, this one does path animations, where you can see the paths each well I'm pointing at my screen here but you can see like the blue line is being animated you can learn how path animations work from this and then apply it to your very own use case instead of just copy pasting these and some of these components honestly I don't really recommend you put on your website most of these are great some of them I don't see the value in like this one it looks nice don't get me wrong this looks pretty cool but because the button kind of shifts in where it is and it also shifts around as you move the mouse this is just not a good user experience and I personally would not put this on my website because here's how I see this right design always needs to follow the functionality first off think about what message do you want to convey on your website right if it's your portfolio then you want to convey that you do good work and people should contact you and the design should follow accordingly and to me it kind of appears that the focus is more on the design than the functionality which kind of compromises user experience in this regard so for me the approach is always the other way around first think of the functionality and then support that through design and not the other way around. So I'm not a fan of this component in particular, but most of them are pretty great and make for like really subtle, nice backgrounds like this right here. It's called sparkles. And I believe there's even a second example right here. Yeah, you could like turn down the opacity and then have this as the background on your website. That looks pretty nice. Background gradient. This is one you'd also rarely see on an actual like e-commerce website. It implies kind of like an e-commerce context here, but this is kind of, it distracts from the product. You know what I mean? Like in this case, the approach is the other way around. The functionality follows the design. The background distracts from what you really want the focus to be on, which is the product in an e-commerce context. So some of them, I don't really understand the decisions behind them. Some of them, like this one, are really good. Because take a look at this. The spotlight shines on one certain word. What does that mean in the context of design following the functionality? So the way it should be, in my opinion, 
it's that you can highlight one certain word. What makes your product stand out? Well, that's what the spotlight can shine on. So some of these really nail it. And there's a ton more. I think from here on out, we're just gonna focus on the ones I like the most. Like the image slider right here that nobody asked for. I'm not even sure if you can... Oh yeah, you can use the arrow keys. Okay, but the user would actually have to kind of guess that you're able to do that, because I don't think they would expect it. Anyways, there's like entire parallax sections, which are, they look amazing. Once again, I'm not sure if it makes too much sense to implement them as is, at least copy paste, because chances are, if you see like a portfolio project on here, if you put this on your website, then you want to actually be able to see the hero section. And you can only kind of do that through scrolling here. And most of the time they're actually kind of hidden. So it's really cool if you take a look at the code to learn how this is done, right? Because it's not abstracted away from you. You can literally see how this is animated copy pasting as is probably not the most friendly user experience i'm not gonna be the judge right if that's what you want to do hey totally cool hero waves okay interesting i guess they're just kind of chilling in the background of your website hero section if you want to have them to highlight the text i guess nothing i've ever seen on a website but i think the principle is interesting and let's get to the most interesting ones i think so one of them is the was it this one no it wasn't the animated tooltip ah i think this is too playful i wouldn't put this on my own website to be honest the the attention to the detail is nice because as we move the mouse the text kind of moves but i think it's too playful it distracts from the purpose but one of them yeah this one was really cool this is something you'll actually see in the real world on apps like canva for example that enable kind of multiplayer where multiple people can share the same project and move around their mouse and you can see where the other people are currently moving and to see how it's done we can just switch over to the code tab right here and then see in the code for ourselves how this is styled with tailwind and i believe it also uses the next yeah the next image some stuff I'm genuinely a fan of are these kind of like subtle background animations because I don't think they take away from the message you want to convey on the website too much and they have a very nice attention to detail. For example, this background beams, there's also the SVG mask effect. I think this is too much again. This would be something if you want to win like an uh, AWW award, like an award. This is a heavily front and base kind of competition. And this SVG mask effect is something you're going to see in a lot of these AWW award websites, whatever they're called, right? For me personally, uh, I don't know, on, on your own website, maybe portfolio. Besides that, probably not too useful, but some of these are actually really cool. Like the backgrounds, the grid, and I believe there's also like a dot down here. No, this is just a finer grid. And then here's the dot. This might be one of my favorites. This is extremely subtle. It looks absolutely great. This is nice. This is the lamp effect I showed you in the very beginning of the video from the linear website that they kind of pioneered and people have tried to re-implement this into their own website a lot. You can now see how it's done. As we kind of scroll down, let's refresh the page. The lamp fades in and then highlights that section that the user is currently looking at. And dude, for some of these components, like especially the MacBook scroll, where the MacBook is built in Tailwind CSS, dude, I can just imagine how much effort it must be to come up with something like this, make the animations work reliably on desktop. And not only that, like all of this has to be responsive as well, right? So on mobile as well, that's pretty nuts. So big respect for putting in the effort. So what are we thinking? You like it? You don't like it? Let me know down below. I think especially the backgrounds look really nice. It's not like super hard to do them yourself, but you can see how they're done in terms of vectors and can just copy paste them on your own website, which is pretty rad. And then all the animations as well. You can just see how they're done implement them yourself. That's where I see most of the value in this library. Let me know what you think. I really enjoyed going through this together with you and then I'm gonna see you in the next video. Until then, have a good one and bye bye.